Sony, don't make it really easy on us. Sixers win 122 to 113. Behind Tobias Harris, great effort. Early on in the game, you know, Tobias Harris just took initiative. He really attacked. Mid Rangers, they had Joss O'Kiki guarding him, and you know, the kid's feisty, he could be defensively, but he's 6'4. And, <laughs> you know, I was actually, I ended up listening to some NBC Sports for up here, you know, Mark and Zoo, they call a great game. Mark and Zoo, no. Mark and Al. <laughs> you know, they call a great game. I ended up listening to some of the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves announcers. They did a good job, but they did a great job. I thought they were very knowledgeable about the game, very knowledgeable about both teams, very fair and respectful. So shout out to the Minnesota announcers. We've had our fair of other announcers, you know, uh, you know, without naming names, right? <laughs> so I thought them in the uh, Minnesota announcers, I thought they were cool, I thought they had a great broadcast, and I really enjoyed listening to them. So yeah, Tobias Harris, he just went ham, mid-range, freeze, had a big-ass dunk to the kind of steal the game there. Tobias Harris have been absolutely sensational this year. Shout out to Brock Landis, who brought up the stat on Twitter, 20 points, 50% field goal percentage, or more. Tobias Harris has 23 such games. The only player that had that many games? Kawhi Leonard the Claw. So yeah. You know it's about winning when the number one seed. Hey coaches. You can make up your snub by voting for Tobias Harris next year. Tobias Harris is clearly an all-star caliber player this week. I, I mean I'm sorry. There's no two ways and it's about it. I mean, hooray for the Knicks for being 500, but it's one thing to do some good things for a 500 team. It's another thing entirely to do it for the best team in the conference. Tobias should have been in. Like, come on. You made the wrong call, coaches. And, <laughs> you know, Tobias Harris said that he would take it personally. And that he was going to come in and execute against teams. Just show them that they were wrong. And he kept doing that. John beat his first game back after the bone booze. And you know, it kind of showed. And really, I want to touch on that because I want some fans to understand. It's going to take John B a little bit of time. Because you are coming from the bone booze. You are coming from a three week layoff. And if you've done any competitive athleticism, any in your life, you'll know that it's one thing to rev up to a 10 and have that consistent motor in a routine that you're used to, and then you get thrown a wrench like the layoff and the bone bouge. It's going to take John B a little bit of time to really get back into the pick of things and as Joel has already said, you know, kind of a couple of times, I see in a couple of years before, the best way to get John B, you know, in the best shape of his life for the postseason is to get that guy game. So, minutes restrictions, sure, but continue to play him, continue to put him in a position to get his conditioning and stuff right back to where it was, and we should get prime John B for the postseason. I thought John B, he played really well offensively, defensively. I thought you saw the rest more. But then he comes up with three crucial blocks, two of them in the second half. One of them empathetically in the final 30 seconds, you know, to again seal that game. And this is why John B, the MVP. MVP doesn't always mean, who I put up a 50 or 55 burger. It's when your MVP struggles, but still carries out a way to a win as an MVP. And now, let's talk about this. You know, this point had been brought up a little bit. The effect that John B. has positively on Ben Simmons. Where, if you've caught a few things from me, and if you've seen me, you know, in active discussions during the last couple of days, I was like, Ben's point guard play had been, and it was, atrocious. To a point where it was like, you brought George Hill in, 
and I would still like to see him at the start of it because Seth Curry defensively is going to be an issue in the playoffs. But my whole thing was Ben Simmons, the point guard, that experiment had come to an end. Well, I thought that Ben Simmons had one of his better point guard games today. You know, the numbers aren't going to pop it off. He didn't go for 30. He had a real nice dunk. But it's not like, boo, Ben Simmons showed that superstar potential. It's actually, it, it was the kind of game that makes you... Have you ever been in a situation where you kind of take a blue pill? Or wait, it was a red pill, right? <laughs> and you realize sudden uncomfortable truths. You know, the money is the money. He'll never live up to it. It is what it is. It's a bad contract, but what the hell. You know, you did use a number one pick, and guys like Jalen Brown and Brandon Ingram are super elite at their position. It is what it is. That's kind of what this game showed me. What a good bench of the game show me is, it is what it is. He will probably never catch up to those guys. He will always probably be top 30, top 40, maybe never top 15 guy ever in his career. It, it is what it is. I would rather Ben Simmons be a consistent top 30, 40 player and only have one turnover and seeing Ben with his offensive game try to be more than what he is I, I think I'm personally at the point where I know I said we, we weren't going to look back but what if those type of games are such an anomaly so unproductive for Ben Simmons in the long run that it's better to just accept 16, 8, and 8 where that's a great place for him to be I mean that's where I'm at where Ben Simmons looking way better in terms of overall game flow. I thought he made great decisions. There was this one possession where he had the ball, he was in semi-transition, and it would have been one of those things over like three days ago. He would have tried running smack dab into them. He uses the dribble, he stopped for a second, kicks out to Seth Curry and knocks down the free ball. That's the kind of decision making that had been missing from Ben Simmons all throughout March. I feel like having Jerome B back calmed Ben Simmons down even when he wasn't on the floor and I just can come to terms that Ben will probably never live up to those expectations. He never will. He doesn't have that ability. It's not fair to continue to expect something of Ben that he is not able to bring to the forefront. What Ben is able to do is to rebound a little, defend a little, although I thought his defense was inconsistent today, and in fact his defense was probably the worst part of the day. You did give up 113 to the Timberwolves for a reason. I thought the Ben was inconsistent defensively. I thought he looked lackadaisical at times defensively. But if this is the Ben Simmons that I'm going to get, and this is the Ben Simmons that leads the Sixers to a title, I will live with it, so long as we win, and as long as we win the title. Because frankly, this is a much better Ben Simmons than seeing Ben Simmons try to run it up the court past two or three guys. I I've had enough of that, Ben. I've had enough of Ben pushing the table. I've had enough of it. Because for every game where Ben Simmons shows something amazing from it, ten times he shows something horrific from it. Let's just accept his flawed... Multi-dimensional game for what it is, and just let Tobias Harris and John B. carry the load off entropy because we've seen the alternative last five We saw the alternative. Aggressive Ben may not be best Ben. It may just be really bad Ben sometimes, a lot of times. So, good on Ben for this game. Good on Ben for this performance. And seeing the overall outcome, I mean, obviously, we would be the fools, right? But it was the way our offense looked in half court situations with Ben being a good Ben that makes me be like, okay, 16, 8, and 8, I'm cool with that. 
people gonna win a championship, you know? And I think that that's what Ben should focus on. Ben should focus on being a third, fourth option, great rebounding, great at defense. You know, I still think that it would be better if we have a secondary playmaker. And Seth Curry had five assists, and I'm gonna look over those five assists to see if it were playmaking or if it just Seth Curry making some smart passes. But if you have a secondary ball handler in the lineup with Ben, I feel like that also helps him be consistent. And I think that's the key. Consistency, consistent production, and consistently putting yourself in a position where at the very least you don't harm your team. At the very least you don't harm your team, and I thought that Ben did that. Danny Green hit a couple of fees. Sub Curry hit a couple of fees. Shake Milton came on and he hit a couple of fees. And good to see Shake Milton shoot the b-ball 40% last couple of games. Hopefully that continues for Shake. I can't wait to see how we integrate George Hill into this. I actually now think that the Spurs have Fort Myers is probably going to lose the minutes. The Mike Scott will lose the minutes as well because George Hill has already paid 28 minutes for his career. George Hill with his elite defense, six foot nine wingspan, six foot four body. He's also able to shoot the free get to the rim. I'm excited to see how George Hill allows you to play some small ball lineups. Because with that six foot nine, he can even guard a couple of fees. So I like to see how the Sixers might go small ball, put some tempo, get more shots up. I'm really interested to see how George Hill is integrated into this offense when he's able to come into the games. Oh boy, we did what we had to do. You know, you play bad team, you beat bad team. I would like to beat them without needing, you know, a two-minute segment, but that's good. You know, not that that's good at the Timberwolves win there, but it's good that you're able to execute in two minutes, and it's good that you're able to get clutch buckets, get a clutch box. This team in the clutch this year has been elite, elite, and that's what it's going to have to take. If you could get the Nets within two three points and a couple of minutes to go, what a team that's battle tested in those situations. The Nets are not. The Nets are not comfortable in our little balling kind of playground. They would much rather either high scoring or blowout. But if we're within five minutes, you know, that's the position we want to be in in a summer game series against them. That might seem kind of productive considering. Oh my god, they got three ISO guys, but the three ISO guys haven't been in this situation. We've been in this situation all year. We're a much more comfortable team than they are in a close game scenario. So, you know, that's really what all I have. We played a good game, we won a good game, and it's on the Memphis next. Will MB play? I hope he does. If he doesn't, we can still take it. You know, we went 7 to beat without him be, but I'm hoping he plays. One of the reasons I'm hoping he plays is that he deserves his MVP. Joe and B is the MVP of the league, and if MB plays every game, that will bode well for him and our chances. So go Sixers, Sixers Universe, signing off. Peace.